Let's be real, video editing can take forever sometimes. I absolutely hate wasting time. I know you do too. So today I'm gonna to show you my top five tools that I've found over the years really helped me to speed up my edits and just get it done so I can go and do other things that are more fun. So let's jump onto the computer and stop wasting all this time. Okay, so my first tool is adjustment layers. And what this lets you do is apply a single effect to a whole bunch of clips, even your entire timeline all at once. I'm gonna show you how to add an adjustment layer, but here's a little quick bonus tip to save time. Don't trawl through all of these complicated menus. Just go straight to help and then type in adjustment. And just like that, we will see add adjustment clip. So if you ever forget where anything is in any of these menus, just go straight to help and type it in and it will come up straight away. It's so much faster, use this all the time. So let's go add adjustment clip. And just like that, we've added this layer on top of our timeline and we can make this as long or as short as we want. So for me, I'm just gonna put it over this A roll section here because I'm wanting to add a LUT onto my footage. Just for the sake of argument, let's say. So I'm gonna go LUT, custom LUT, drag it onto our adjustment layer. And we can treat this just like a clip basically. So we can add as many effects as we like. I'm gonna select my own LUT. And that's obviously looking way too intense. Let's turn it down a touch. That's looking all right. And just like that, we've added that LUT across all of these different clips. So if I turn it off and on, you can see the difference. Of course, if we wanna stack effects, it's just the same thing. Find any other effect you wanna apply, drag it onto the adjustment layer. Just like that, it's appeared. Now if I play this back, as you can see, it's got the effect applied to any clip that's under this adjustment layer. If I drag it out even further, you can see it's gonna be applied to my B-roll, but anything that it's not covering isn't gonna have that effect applied. So that's a great way to just quickly and easily apply effects across a whole bunch of clips all at once. Okay, the next tip is copy and pasting effects. Now basically I showed you the way to apply effects to a whole bunch of clips, but sometimes you do actually want to be able to apply individual effects to individual clips. So let's just say for these two clips, I want the same effects applied on each and I want to use, just for the sake of argument, this film grain effect. So I'm just gonna drag this onto my first clip and I'm gonna hide the background. So that is looking good. If I play that back and see we've got our film grain applied. Now I'm also going to add some color correction. So I just wanna boost my shadows a little bit. Maybe bring down the mid tones, make it a little bit more film looking, just like that. I wanna maybe boost the shadow saturation. This is all looking terrible, but it's just for the sake of argument. And then let's just say, lastly, I also want to add some hue and saturation curves. I want to change the color of this phone. I'm going to make it, let's go with purple. That looks kind of cool. So we've got multiple effects going on now. We've got these three different effects that have applied to this one clip. Now what I could do obviously is go into the next clip and then redo the same thing, but I have to do it all manually and it would take ages, especially if I'm doing it to multiple clips throughout my timeline. The faster way to do it is just to click the clip that you've already applied all your effects to, hit command C, then go over to your next clip, select that, and then go shift command V. This is gonna bring up your paste attributes window. This is something that I use all the time and you can copy and paste not only video attributes, but also audio attributes. So if you make any modifications to the audio in your clips, you can copy and paste that across clips. But here you can see it's copied these three effects that we added onto our first clip. So I'm just gonna hit paste. And just like that, we now have the exact same effects applied to our second clip. And we can do that for any other clip in our entire timeline, just like so, or like this. And as gonna save you honestly so much time. Okay, next is kind of obvious, but I just wanna briefly mention my top three keyboard shortcuts. If you don't already use keyboard shortcuts, it's gonna save you a lot of time if you can get proficient with it. So here's my top three. So number one lets me cut a lot faster. So let's just say I wanna cut this clip about here. Just wanna make sure it's selected so it's got the yellow box around it. And then I'll just go Command B with the playhead at the spot that I wanna make the cut. So now I'm gonna hit Command B. And just like that, it's created this cut. It selects the left hand clip and then I can just hit delete and bam, I've created a cut. Now if I was to do this manually, there's a couple of ways I could do it. I could drag this over or I could actually use the blade tool by clicking here and clicking on the timeline. Then I have to go back to my select tool, click, delete. It's just so much more complicated. Whereas with the blade shortcut, it's just command B, delete, done. Now, another great shortcut that I use a lot is the retime shortcut. So let's just say I wanted to speed this clip up. I'm just gonna, again, select it, make sure the playhead is away from the clip. Then I'm gonna select my clip. Again, keep the playhead off. This will make more sense in a second. And then go Shift B. Now that's gonna bring up this green bar on top of the clip. And if you hit the drop down menu, you can select slow, smooth, slow-mo, fast. You can customize it to any speed that you want. You can reverse the clip. Let's just say we wanna reverse it and make it 200% speed. 
hit enter. And just like that, it's now playing in reverse at 200% speed. Now, the reason I said to keep the playhead off is because if you have the playhead hovering over your clip with it selected, and then you hit shift B, it's gonna create this kind of cut in the speed here. Now that's actually really helpful for speed ramping, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. So let's move on to the last keyboard shortcut. This one is super easy if you don't already know it, and that's V, just tap that, and it will enable and re-enable different clips in your timeline, just like that. Again, I use this all the time. Trust me, that one is gonna come in very handy. Okay, the next tool is super smooth and really easy, zoom in and zoom out. Now, if you're familiar with talking head content like this, you're probably used to seeing jump cuts where it basically goes from a normal shot like this and then jumps into a closer shot like that. This is really good for breaking out your content, helping with pacing, which can improve overall engagement, which is a good thing. But going in and doing this manually for every single clip can be very tiring. And it also doesn't always look the smoothest. So what I recommend is actually a downloadable plugin. It's completely free, but that is called MCamRig. And that's what this layer here is. So if I play this back, you can see this really smoothly keyframes a nice smooth easy ease into my shot. And to me, it's just a much cleaner, nicer way to do those kind of zoom ins to emphasize key points. Again, it's free online. Just search up MCamRig and you'll find it. Once you've installed it, it'll be here in your titles and generators section. So you just drag it onto your timeline, just like we did with our adjustment layer. And then if you go up to your inspector window, hit the T, there's all these customizable parameters. So generally there's only four different parameters that I personally touch. We've got the depth of field blur amount. So by default, when it first starts zooming in, it'll blur blur your footage like this. It's just kind of simulating a bit of a camera effect. I personally don't like it. It's up to you. I just turn that off down to zero. And then your camera angle of view is your zoom. So I just adjust this to whatever I think looks good. Usually it's around here. And then you can just drag this little circle to wherever you want the zoom to finish. So for me, I want it to finish there. If I play this back, that is looking perfect. Another cool thing about it is that you can adjust the length of it. Again, just like our adjustment layer. So not only will it zoom in, but it will also zoom out. If you don't want it to zoom out, you just want it to end zoom in. You can turn the in and out animations off and on. So let's just say I want it to only zoom in. And then when it gets to the end, it's just gonna cut back. From there, you can literally just copy and paste this throughout your video in any spot that you think makes sense. Okay, so my last tool is something that I think a lot of people don't really realize is in Final Cut, and it tends to be quite underutilized, and that's keyword collections. Now, basically, these let you organize your footage much more clearly. So for example, in this Nothing Phone 3 review that I did, I've got all these different keyword collections here. So for me, I've got a keyword collection, which just shows me test images that I shot on the Nothing Phone. I've got an iPhone keyword collection where I've got all of my footage that directly relates to my iPhone. Then we've got a music keyword collection so I can see the track that I wanted to add to this particular video. And I can just quickly browse through that. Same thing for nothing phone footage and so on. Personally, I think of keyword collections basically like folders within my project. So if I click on the actual event, we're gonna see all of my different media all in the one viewer. And this can get really complicated really quickly. You've probably experienced this. And so having these folders or keyword collections can just make things a a lot more streamlined if you're looking for a specific clip or a specific track. In order to add one, it's really easy. Just right click on your event, go new keyword collection, and then it's gonna come up with the ability to name it. So I'm just gonna go screen recordings. Now I've got this empty keyword collection. And now anytime I import footage and wanna add it to a keyword collection, I just drag it in. So I've got this screen capture here and drag it onto my screen recordings keyword collection. And just like that, it's right there, ready for me to use whenever I need. And it won't be in any of the other keyword collections. If you want to know more of my most used keyboard shortcuts, there's a link in the description where you can get a completely free PDF with all of those listed out for you. There you go. I really hope that saves you hours of your time and you can go and do much more fun things than just sitting and editing all day. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about Final Cut Pro, then check out this playlist right here where I've done a whole bunch of other editing tutorials that help you go more in depth with FCP.